I believe in the pliable identity of art. That is to say, I believe that anything can be art. It doesn't matter how long it took to create, who created it, or what it looks like. It's not a revolutionary idea. The postmodernists love to play with and question words like art, literature, and reality. Words like these are hard to define, but we try anyway. Not because it's important to do so, but because the undefinable is uncomfortable. I am not a total subjectivist. I do believe in the existence of good and evil, right and wrong, reality and fantasy. I just don't believe that these words are applicable to art or literature. Saying that there is good versus bad art is suggesting that art is a moral issue. It's not. I can't think of a single holy text that gives criteria for art or for literature. Someone might choose not to read or watch something because their religion tells them that the content is unsavory, but that person's belief system cannot possibly define art for non-believers. But still, many people insist that there are, quote, right and, quote, wrong things to read, and that certain pieces of art have more inherent value than others. My older sister, Andra, is one of these people. In her never-ending quest to make my 13-year-old sister, Miranda, more cultured, Andra insists that Gossip Girl and Twilight are making her dumb. She needs to read Pride and Prejudice and Wuthering Heights. But who's to say that reading classics makes you an intellectual? Before they were given awards and prizes and critical acclaim, weren't classics just stories like any other novel? In fact, aren't some books that were once considered offensive and crass now lauded as literature? According to Andra, literature is the practical application of philosophical principles and or universal truths through written or oral communication. And art is the intentional physical manifestation of universal truths produced by human beings whatever that means. She has a ready definition, but could never explain what made an application practical, a principle philosophical, or a truth universal. Asking these questions made her hang up on me time and time again. But even if she could objectively cite examples of universal truths, don't those exist in all writing and in all art? Aren't tacky teen romance novels expressions of the universal truth that true love overcomes all obstacles? Isn't pornography an expression of the human reality of lust? Wouldn't that make those things art according to Andrew's definition? I believe that we as humans can't help but express universal truths. It's a way of reaching out to others, to our audience, whether that is an audience of one person or five million. It would be easy for me to say that every created work is art, and every book is literature. Why do we even bother defining creativity this way? People only create categories like art or literature to separate things out that do not fit into them. To tell someone that they should be reading, watching, or looking at one thing and not another simply because another person says so. If someone enjoys watching romantic comedies instead of artsy films, it shouldn't matter if some other person says the artsy film is better. If a toddler's finger paintings uplifts a mother recovering from an illness, it shouldn't matter whether anyone thinks it's good. Maybe, instead of telling people that one thing is art and another doesn't meet the standard, we should try to find the meaning, the universal truth, in all of the media we consume. Or maybe we should just enjoy these things for what they are.